Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmommy.wordpress.com. Every time that I'm trying to come up with a topic for my Patreon videos, I always try to do something that is a little bit different than the run-of-the-mill videos that I do on my channel. And sometimes it's really hard for me to come up with an idea. So today what I thought that I was going to share with you was something a little personal, but something that I get asked about a lot. So I'm going to talk to you about pregnancy, my two DVTs, and my experience with birth control, which led me to the notion that you really do have to be your own health advocate. Whenever people hear that I have 11 kids, they always ask me if I planned on having 11 kids. And you know, yes and no. Originally, I used to say that I wanted four kids, like my mom. I wanted boy, girl, boy, girl, just like she did. Funnily enough though, that is actually what I got for my, four, for my first four. They were boy, girl, boy, girl. So I had gotten what I wanted. But then I got to a point where I enjoyed being pregnant so much, I enjoyed ha just being a mom so much, that I eventually said, I'm just going to keep having kids until I can't have them anymore. And I always said, God told us to be fruitful and multiply. And the funny thing is that I actually said that even before I had accepted Jesus as my savior. I had always considered myself a Christian. I grew up going to church, but it was more of a tradition for me. And I did talk about this in another video. I'll link it in the description box if you want to hear more of that story. But suffice it to say that I did not become a true Christian until I was already pregnant with my seventh baby. So yeah, being a mom of many was on my radar for a really long time. Um, now around my eighth pregnancy is when I really started to have some difficulties with my legs. I was starting to have some varicose veins from just from having all of the pregnancies, a lot of swelling all the time. And after I gave birth to my eighth child, Luke, I actually had so much pain in my legs from my veins that I couldn't walk. I think he was probably about three or four days old. I had to crawl for out to my mother's car and she had to take me to the emergency room where they scanned my legs to check to see if I had any clots. And thankfully at that time, it was just superficial clots in my legs. It was just, you know, um, superficial thrombophlebitis is what it was called. So it was basically, you know, hot compresses and rest with your legs up, which is hard when you've got eight kids and one of them's a newborn. But I got through that. Um, my ninth child, well, I, my ninth pregnancy came and I remember that my OBGYN was not happy with me. They weren't really happy with me when I, when they found out that I was expecting Luke, because every time I would go there, it's dangerous for you to have this many kids. It's not good for you. Something's going to happen. So yeah, when I, when I found out I was expecting my ninth one, I heard the same thing. And actually my, my pregnancy with her was pretty, um, it was pretty easy. I didn't really have that many issues other than just having a bunch of kids to look after while I'm already expecting a ninth one. Now with my 10th one though, that is when some of the bigger problems started to set in. I um, started having so much pain in my right leg. For some reason, it was always my right leg. And to this day, when I have issues, it usually is my right leg. Um, I had so much pain in my leg so much redness, tenderness, that I literally couldn't stand it. And I went to the to my OBGYN appointment and they checked my leg and they said to me, oh, this is just cellulitis. And I said, this is not cellulitis. I said, I'm pretty sure that I've got some sort of a clot in there because I knew just from even the superficial um, clot, it's really painful. And I knew what that felt like already. 
but they actually did end up admitting me um, and but they admitted me for cellulitis which was funny so then when they realized that it was not cellulitis I don't even believe at that time that they even did a scan of my leg at that point they just sent me home I remember I was so upset because I was 36 weeks pregnant they kept me overnight um, because they thought I was had cellulitis but uh, it wasn't so then they just sent me home and I was in as much pain as when I had gotten there they didn't like they gave me no sent no sort of relief at all for my leg so finally when I did have my daughter um, again I was starting to have more pain in my leg and I told them and that is when after I had her they finally did a a scan on my leg and they said yes you have another superficial uh, thrombophlebitis but we're gonna keep an eye on it and if you start to feel any pain in your groin area that's when we're gonna start to worry so they took me back up to my room and I remember it was probably the next day that I started to feel some tenderness at my groin area and I told them and I thought to myself that I was probably just um it's probably just having anxiety about it you know I was nervous about it and it started to be something that I was really paranoid about and it really took away from my experience of having you know my my little tenth baby there with me summer that's who that was and um, so then they did another scan found out that yes it had moved up to my groin area which meant that I was going to have to start being put on blood thinners which would have to for the first six weeks after I had given birth I would have to inject them into my stomach um, I don't remember at that point if it was once or twice a day but I was gonna have to do that and I remember that they started warning me if I felt shortness of breath I should let them know and panic set in and yeah I started feeling shortness of breath and I remember that just to be on the safe side they gave me a CAT scan um, I think it, that's what it was a CT scan of my lungs just to make sure and I remember that at the time that I was waiting for my CT scan results I was by myself in my hospital room my husband was at home with all of the kids and I was, yeah, I was by myself. And I remember that a doctor from the ER actually came to my room and sat with me to keep me company while I was waiting for my test results. And I'm forever grateful for that. And thankfully, when I got the test results, I found out that no, it had not moved to my lungs. It was likely my anxiety, but I was happy to know that. So yeah, I did have to go home then and do the, the uh, I think it was Lovenox blood thinner injections and then after that I was on heparin for a while and I have, would have to go to the lab every few days to have my blood work drawn just to see where my levels were at and everything so after I was finally able to get off of that when the clot had dissolved after I had to go to the vascular doctor like every once in a while to have my legs scanned um, maybe about a year after after not having to be on blood thinners anymore I found out I was expecting Kenzie and I was scared I'm I was absolutely terrified and I was so scared actually that I was afraid to go to the doctor because I just didn't want to know and not, not that I was pregnant I, I didn't want them to say anything to me about clots again so I avoided it so pr I probably avoided going to the doctor with Kenzie like longer than any of the other kids all my other kids I was already at the doctor like four to six weeks pregnant I was there and I didn't go with Kenzie until I was 12 weeks pregnant with her and I remember when I went I actually had a new doctor I had um, she was a certified nurse practitioner and she scolded me for waiting that long because she said with my history and of course I had to go through that whole spiel again but on top of that on top of being told you know well you're 38 years old and you have already had all of these kids and now you have a history of a DVT that's what it is um, deep vein thrombosis that's actually what it was I didn't mention that when it went up to my groin area it was a DVT deep vein thrombosis and you have to watch them because they can actually travel up to your lungs and they can cause a pulmonary embolism um, so yeah I went through that whole spiel they actually started me on Lovenox right away they had me start seeing a perinatologist and so for my entire pregnancy I was having to give myself blood thinner injections twice a day and I remember that 
my stomach was so bruised up from how much from from all of the injections that I had to give myself that at one point when I went in for a routine ultrasound the technician asked me if if I was being abused and I had to say no this is from Lovenox injections and then she was relieved but she said that's what it actually looked like um, and yeah it, it was bad because the pharmacist for, for a couple months he, he didn't have the right size syringes to give me, so he was giving me smaller syringes, meaning that I would have to give myself two shots per dose because the, the, the syringes weren't big enough. So I would have two shots in the morning and two shots in the evening. It wasn't fun. And that entire pregnancy was just really, really nerve wracking. And again, it kind of takes away the excitement when you constantly feel like you're in danger. And it doesn't help that every time you go to the doctor, even though you might be feeling perfectly fine, they really make you feel like you're in complete danger. And I remember at one point, what, for, at my first appointment when I was 12 weeks, um, I, I saw a doctor actually the first time. I don't think I got the nurse practitioner the first time. But I remember he said to me, you need to get on these blood thinners. You could die today. You could die tomorrow. You could die next week. And I remember that that's all that I had on my mind as I was walking home. Because, yeah, the doctor's office was, like, really close to my house. And so, thankfully, I did not have any blood clots, probably likely because of the blood thinners during my last pregnancy. And, um, it, it was nerve wracking though, because when you're, I was already at higher risk of blood loss during pregnancy because your uterus doesn't clamp down properly once you have like so many kids and then all oh, right. And then I have blood, you know, thinners on top of it. So I was nervous about that. Um, I wanted to get to the hospital like boom as soon as I was in labor because I just didn't want to bleed out. Didn't turn out that way though. I was actually, I was having kind of like Braxton Hicks contractions, maybe prodromal labor for, oh my gosh, a couple weeks before I had her. I, and then I was probably about 36 weeks along, found out that I was already six centimeters dilated. And I, they, they didn't, even, they didn't induce me. They just, I had to walk around like that for about three or four days. I walked around at six centimeters dilated. So then, yeah, when I actually did go to the hospital, I was there like 20 minutes and she was already born. Thankfully, you know, nothing happened with the bleeding or anything. But after I went, after I had her, you know, and I went for my postpartum visit and everything and everything was going good. And they actually did keep me on blood thinners just for a couple weeks afterwards, just to make sure, because you can also get blood clots. You're at a higher risk postpartum. And because of my history, they kept me on them. Um, so then I, I stopped though. Everything was fine. And I went to see the nurse practitioner and she just gave me that speech again about how much danger I was in and how important it was that I do something about it. And so she, and now I have to say that my nurse practitioner, she knew that I was a Christian. She knew that I was pro-life, obviously 11 babies. She, she knew all of these things, but yet she um, talked to me about having what was called Implanon. And it was like an implant that they put in your arm right here. And I, I think it lasted like three years. I don't even remember exactly. And at the time I asked her um, if that would increase my risk of blood clots because I knew that some birth control pills do because of the hormones that they put in them. And she reassured me, no, this, this, will, this is a different kind of hormone. It's not that hormone. So you're, you're okay. I didn't think though at the time of asking her if the implant itself was pro-life because I'm sorry to say at that point, I still wasn't questioning things. I kind of just did whatever the doctor told me to. Um, I never thought of researching things on my own. And again, yeah, I, I feel stupid for doing that, but I admit to it. I never looked into things for myself at that point. So I just believed that she would, you know, honor my faith and would, you know, and that what she was giving me was okay. So what ended up happening though, was that I, I started um, to have doubts about having this implant in my arm. I, I didn't like the idea of something like that in my body. And so that was when I finally decided, okay, I'm gonna look into this and I'm gonna see what this is.
And lo and behold, I found out that the implant that she had given me was an abortifacient, meaning that it will prevent a fertilized egg from implanting into the uterus. And to me, if there is a fertilized egg already, and if you are preventing implantation, that is an abortion. And that's why it's called an abortifacient. And what I went to, to find out, what I went on to find out, I read through all these different birth controls, and most of them are. She said none of this to me, nothing. She knew my stance. I was horrified. And I remember the day after I found out, I called her and I demanded to have an appointment to have it removed. So she gave me the appointment. She wasn't happy with me. She gave me the appointment though and she asked why I wanted to have this taken out and I explained to her. I told her I am pro-life. I looked this up and I found out that it prevents fertilized eggs from implanting in the uterus and she said, oh, I know it does that. And I said to her, well, I'm a Christian. I'm pro-life. That goes against my beliefs. And I will never forget that she said to me, well, I'm Christian too. I'm Catholic. And I happen to know that the Bible says that um, God helps those who help themselves. And I remember thinking to myself, the Bible does not say that anywhere. But I was not about to have that conversation with her. I just said to her, no, I want this taken out. So she took it out and then she proceeded to scare me once again into making an appointment to have a tubal ligation. And she explained to me that with the tubal ligation, there, with any surgery, there's an increased risk of clots. And, but I still, you know, I, I scheduled the appointment. Um, and then I went home. I prayed about it, pondered a couple of days. And I, I finally came to the conclusion that I was not going to have to do that either. And I called her, I called them up and I, I canceled the appointment and I said to them, if I am going to die from a blood clot, I would rather die from bringing a life into the world rather than preventing one. So I canceled the, the tubal ligation appointment and that was when I realized that doctors are not telling their patients what they need to know about birth control. They're not telling their patients what they need to know about a lot of things. And we need to start asking questions. And that was my first foray into knowing that you have to be your own health advocate. But the story doesn't even end there. About two, no, a month after having the um, implant removed, I started having pain in my leg. Went to the hospital, found out that I had another DVT. This time it was behind my knee. The funny part is that I was having pain in my left leg. They scanned my left leg. It was only superficial, superficial thrombophlebitis again in my left leg. And they scanned the right leg just for comparison. And that is how they actually found the clot behind my right knee. I was having no pain there at all, yet I had a clot there. So, you know, the Lord, he, he sent me to the ER for sure so that I would find this out. And so that started me thinking again, could this implanon have had anything to do with it? She wasn't forthcoming about it being in abortive fashion. What else did she not tell me? So I went online, happened to find out there was a class action lawsuit against implanon for causing clots. So after my nurse practitioner had reassured me that this birth control device was not going to cause clots because it didn't have that kind of hormones. That's what she said. Wasn't right. There was a class action lawsuit against Implanon. Um, I actually signed up to be a part of it. Not so much because, you know, you probably get like $2 out of it, depending on how much money they give out. But I just wanted them to know exactly how many people have been affected by this. But something happened where I didn't fall within the right date. I guess they were doing a certain date for, for the class action lawsuit. So I didn't fall in like for the right amount of time there. But that is that was another clue that, no, we we... As sovereign citizens, we as individuals, we need to start asking questions.
we can't always assume that we're going to be given the truth and we can't always assume that we're always going to be given the right answers all the time. And that was really my first taste into the fact that, yeah, you can't even trust your doctor all the time. And I honestly wish that I would have thought about that when it came to continuing on with vaccinations with my kids. I didn't wake up to that until probably about four years after this. I'm sorry to say, but I'm happy that I just woke up at all. But anyway, so that is my story um, about my pregnancy and my two deep vein thrombosis. Is that a word? Thrombosis? Thrombosis? I, I don't know. I don't know what the plural of that is. Two DVTs and um, birth control lies that I was told. And now you know just a little bit more about me personally and something that has nothing to do with homeschooling. So anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram because YouTube disabled my comments. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, if you haven't already, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And to all of the people who are already my patrons, I just want to say thank you so much. You are such an encouragement to me and I hope you have a great day.